What's going on guys, Cooper Carter here for G66 and on this week's Fractal Friday, I'm giving you a crash course in controlling just about anything in your Fractal unit with MIDI CC messages. Two weeks ago on Fractal Friday, we talked about changing presets in the Axe-FX3, the FM9, or the FM3 via MIDI. And we used PC, or program change, messages sent from a DAW. I'm using Reaper in my case, but you might be using Pro Tools, or Logic, or really any number of DAWs that people can use to change via MIDI on stage with a playback system. As promised, this video is going to be a quick crash course in issuing CC, or control change messages, to your Fractal unit to control just about any parameter you can think of in your unit. Now again, this is a crash course, but this is a perfect example of something that I get into in great detail in my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series, which you can sign up for at classes.coopercarter.com. Now, as before, on the AxeFX3 or the FM9, you're going to want to use a USB cable to control your unit via MIDI, and we're going to use MIDI over USB. And if you're on the FM3, you're going to need a USB to MIDI cable that you can plug into the MIDI in port of your FM3. My recommended cable for basic USB to MIDI control is linked in the description below this video. So just like last week, I'm in Reaper, which is my DAW of choice for working with Fractal Audio units. And I've gone to the preferences and MIDI devices and made sure that my FM9's MIDI out is enabled. If you're on the Axe-FX3, you're going to want to make sure its MIDI out is enabled. Or if you're using a MIDI to USB device like the Uno, you want to make sure that's enabled as well. And just like last week, I've got my playback tracks and a MIDI changes track. And on that MIDI changes track, I've gone into the routing and the MIDI hardware outputs and selected FM9 MIDI out. Again, if you're on an Axe-FX3, select that. If you're on the FM3 and using a Uno or another device, select that. Now, unlike last week, where we were just using a single command, a program change, or PC, to change the presets of the FM9, this week we're using several different CC numbers to change all sorts of things. So here I've got a command for scene 2. I've got a command to change to scene 4. Drive 1 off. Drive 1 on. I've got one for drive one on and switching the drive to channel B. Now, none of the current Fractal units ship with those CCs assigned to parameters, so they really give you a choice of how you want to assign those CCs. We'll go into Setup here, and then MIDI Remote, and you'll see there is a huge bevy of things that we can assign to MIDI. The bypass states of every block. The channel of every block that has a channel. There are 16 different external controllers that you can use to attach to anything in your Fractal unit that can take a modifier. So think the sweep of a wah. The possibilities are almost literally endless. You've got CCs for looper control, and then other, which includes scene select, by far my most used CC. Now you'll see that I've assigned some numbers here, CC 34 to scene select. I've got CC 16 for external control one. The drive channel is 108. These are the CC numbers that the Axe-FX2 shipped with that you can find on the Fractal Wiki or in the Axe-FX2's manual. I just worked with that unit for so long that I have these ingrained in my head. You guys can choose whatever CC numbers you want. These are a good way to do it though because that is what a lot of Fractal guys go by. But I'm going to show you guys a little trick here to assign these CCs. I'm going to go back to the bypass state of drive 1, which you see right now is set to none. And if we go to my session here, I've created a MIDI item by simply going to insert new MIDI item, and it is for turning off the drive or bypassing drive one. I'll double click that here, and you see that I've got CC as the type, the parameter is 49, and the value is zero. Let's dig into that a little bit. If I go into these event properties, you see that the type is control change or CC. It's happening on the third beat of measure eight. It's on channel one, which is what my FM9 is on and the controller value is 49. Now, if you hit this dropdown in Reaper, and this is likely how it is in your DAW as well, you'll see some names here that really don't apply to Fractal units. Legato pedal, Sostenuto, Portamento, uh, you've got the mod wheel up here, you've got the breadth parameter. These are the standard general MIDI uh, synthesizer CC names. Just ignore them, they don't apply to Fractal. So 49 here is the CC that the Axe-FX2 used to bypass drive one. So I'm sending a value of zero here 
to turn off the pedal. If I wanted to turn it on, I would send 127, which is the top range of MIDI. So let's teach the FM9 now that CC number 49 should turn on and off the drive pedal. All I'm gonna do is hit the learn button here on the FM9, which is the C knob. And now the FM9 is listening, so I'm gonna hit play here on my DAW. And as you can see, the FM9 now knows that CC number 49 should turn on and off the drive. Now that it's off, let's play through this drive on command. And there we go, the drive has been turned on. So now we have our CC numbers set up, the bypass of the drive, the channel of the drive, external control one, which we'll get to in a little bit, and then CC 34 for scene select. So as I mentioned, scene select is by far my most used parameter. I am a big fan of using one preset for a whole gig if I can, and just setting up different sounds on scenes and switching between them. So scene two, for example, starts off this song. Let's check that one out. In my event properties, I'm issuing a control change, of course, at position measure one, beat one on channel one, 34, which again, you're gonna see the synth name here, but 34 is, of course, what we've programmed the FM9 to listen to for scene control. And I'm sending a value of one. Now, why a value of one for scene two? Well, if you remember from our last video, the first preset in any given bank in MIDI speak is actually preset number zero, not preset number one. Well, the same holds true for scenes. Scene number one is value zero, scene number two is one, and so on up to scene number eight, which would be seven in MIDI speak. So we're sending controller 34 value one to select scene two. And likewise, over here on my scene four, I've got CC. 34, value three, which will select scene four. The same holds true for channels. So you have four channels on most effects, A, B, C, and D. Those are actually zero, one, two, and three in MIDI speak. So on this command here, that's issuing both a bypass on 127, on number 49, and a channel select on 108, we are selecting channel B by sending number one as a value. So zero is A, one is B, two is C, three is D. A little confusing if you're just starting out with MIDI, but once you get into it, you guys will get used to zero being the first number. And by the way, if you are using Reaper, you guys can program these commands and then just go into the item properties and name them. So you see I've named this drive one off, and then you can create any number of commands like this with MIDI items and then copy paste them across your songs, across your sessions. So you don't need to make these every time. So you can go in and create scenes one through eight. You can do all your different effects, channel switches, anything that you use a lot, make them as these kind of preset MIDI items. So what we have now is a song that starts off with scene two and it switches to scene four. It turns the drive off, it turns the drive on, it turns the drive back off, and it turns the drive back on and switches to channel B. So let's just hit play and play through it. And I'm gonna to switch to Axe Edit here and you will see that it changes in time based on the MIDI CC commands that it's receiving. Two, one, two, three. So our CC messages worked perfectly. We went from scene two to scene four and the drive turned on and off and then switched channels there for that last little bit. And you all can use this exact methodology and apply it to any number of the countless parameters here that you can assign a CC number to. So maybe for example, you wanna control the input volume of your unit or the output volume, or you wanna control the looper, or a very popular one, you want to switch to the tuner at the end of a song. You can switch that on with MIDI control. There are so many options here. 
But let's try something a little sneaky with the external control here. Now I mentioned that external control can be used to control anything in the unit that can have a modifier attached to it. So anything with this little yellow dot here. If we inserted a new MIDI item, let's drag this out a little bit and then glue it so that it's a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and tell this to be a CC message on 16. We'll go back into the piano roll and draw out some values. And now let's go to our wah pedal and right click our control parameter, attach external one and turn on auto engage. And now we'll hit play. and we have automated our wah pedal. Now this is something that I actually have been asked to do for a large fractal artist. Uh, they wanted to actually program in the wah so that they could walk out into the crowd and still have the wah pedal be part of what they were playing. You could either draw this in like I've done or you could use an external MIDI pedal to record this into your DAW, which is actually what we ended up using. But there are so many uses for external control. For example, you could affect the input gain of a delay or the mix or you could go into the amp block and affect any number of these switches here by simply attaching an external controller and using a CC value of 0 and 127 to turn these on and off via MIDI. The limits are really only your imagination here, as is so often the case in Fractal Land. And that's really all there is to it. Now again, I've given you a couple examples here, but there are countless parameters that you can control in your fractal unit, either by, again, assigning a CC to that specific parameter in the MIDI menu, or as I showed you, by attaching an external control to a parameter and affecting it that way. Get creative with this, and I promise you, you guys can reap a lot of benefits from applying this kind of MIDI control to your live show. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to G66's channel and leave me a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you guys are controlling with MIDI and what you'd like to see in a future episode of Fractal Friday. And as always, if you guys want to get even more out of your Fractal Audio Systems unit, whether that's the Axe 3 the FM9, or the FM3, make sure to visit classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series. For all things Fractal Audio Systems, keep it right here on G66, and I will see you guys very soon on Fractal Friday.